Hi, I'm Michael with Menard Jewelers. Today I want to talk about lasers, a little bit about the history and why we use them today. The first laser was invented by Theodore Maiman in 1960 at the Hughes Research Lab in California. It was primarily used by the military before eventually being used by other industries for doing plastic welding, dental manufacturing, and uh, different things in the medical field. Eventually in 1992, an American company called LaserStar partnered with a German company called Ropen to make and distribute lasers. That lasted for a few years until 1998 when they split ways and they decided to make their own uh, lasers uh, respectively. And they were making lasers for again the, the dental, medical, and at that time they started uh, making lasers specific for the jewelry industry. They were running about $45,000 and they were about three times the size of this machine. That made LaserStar the only company making lasers completely manufacturing them in the United States and to my knowledge they are still the only one doing that today most of them being made in Italy Germany or a lot of them in China fast forward to today and Ropen has since been bought out by a company called Coherent they're still making lasers um, this company that I have here today uh, Orotig was actually also uh, established in 1992 and for their first 15 years or so, they were mostly making lasers for the dental and medical field. Uh, around 2005, I believe, they started making some for the jewelry industry. Uh, they were some, kind of the small kids on the block because you had Rope and Laser Star really um, running the gambit of, of the, the two big, big players in the industry. Um, a few years ago, um, this company came up with a ceramic housing. So all those previous uh, companies, and it, even a lot of the lasers made today, the light bulb that the laser beam goes through on these is housed in a gold-plated chamber with gold connectors on the end. So this company came up with a way of doing a ceramic chamber. Because that chamber, when it wears out, and it usually wears out about every year or two, depending on your usage, runs a little over a thousand dollars to replace it. And your machine has to be, I mean, you have to take out the whole machine apart, pull everything apart, pull out the, the, the bulbs for it, put everything back in, and, and hope you didn't break anything uh, redoing all that. And uh, so it's a, it's, a, it's a full day of work that your shop is down and it, you're out a little over $1,000. With these machines with a ceramic chamber, you don't have to do that anymore. Um, this, the chamber lasts forever, so all you got to do is about worry about the bulb life. And these are rated, uh, I believe they said five to eight years or something like that, something ridiculous. Um, so basically all I have to worry about is the air filters on this machine. Uh, this is a smaller machine. This is their $14,000 model. It does everything you would ever need to do. Uh, its restriction is its coolant reservoir. Um, since I'm a small shop here, small coolant reservoir, it's more than fine for this shop. Uh, another shop I work at, they had the big brother to this machine. And so it's pretty similar looking machine but it's a little bit beefier and has about four times the the cooling capacity so that, that way it can handle a larger shop with multiple people working on it i have um i originally started over uh 12 years ago on a ropen one of the old old ropens uh then i moved to one of the new laser stars um that was probably my favorite machine uh before this one then i moved on to an old laser star um, which worked um, pretty good and then um, I uh, moved to one of the new Ropens um, I still prefer the laser star over the Ropen just my personal preference and then when I opened up this store here um, there's a story behind how I got this if you ever if you ever see me but I uh, picked up this one here and it is now my favorite laser I love this screen I love the controls on it. Um, the microscope is extremely nice. The technology, whatever they used, uh, the type of bulb that they use, it's this long to life bulb, creates a very smooth, controllable laser beam that is very nice. All the controls, you have your four standard controls that you have on all the laser uh, machines, whether it's Laser Star Ropen um, or now Coherent or the Orotig, it's all the same four settings. You have your power. You have your the time of the power. So um, to put it simply, you have your power, your depth, your um, frequency, how many how many hits you're going to hit per second, 
and then the diameter of your laser beam. Uh, so those are the four settings you're going to have on pretty much any uh, of those uh, big name lasers. And I believe any other, like even the Chinese ones use the same kind of setup for adjusting your power. Um, so this, this machine has done great. I love it. And uh, uh, the, the other Orotig that's a little bit bigger than this does the same thing for, I think, about $18,000 uh, for a small shop. You don't need to spend the extra money because you're just buying the cooling capacity. Um, so not a commercial for Orotig. It's just the one I have. Um, the laser stars are fantastic. The, the Ropens do their job. And, and um, they're not my preferred one just because they're... Um, their interface and their their laser beam um, can be a little harder to use, especially if you're a new user, but it still does the same thing, still gets the job done. Um, the benefit of using a, a laser welder is if you have jewelry that has maybe colored stones that you can't take a torch to or can't be removed, or if you're working on platinum, if you use platinum solder, it will, depending on your the the solder you're using, if you're using a low temperature solder versus a high temperature, if you're using low temperature solder on platinum, it will leave a dark gray line. The higher the temperature, the closer you get to the platinum, the less there will be a gray line, but there's still going to be a line. If you use a laser, you're putting platinum on platinum, there's no line. Um, so it, it, it gets rid of that. A lot of people really complain about that when you size platinum rings. Um, alternatively, you can weld platinum, but if you have diamonds again, now you can't take platinum to its melting point to weld the seam uh, if you're doing a sizing or a repair. And so you're stuck using that that's platinum solder if you're using a torch and then you have those seams. The laser gets rid of all of that. You don't have any risk of colored stones. You don't have any uh, lines in your platinum. Um, and there's pretty much the laser can do almost everything the torch can do. Uh, you can't anneal metal with it. Uh, you still need a torch for that. Um, and there are still, still a few things um, that, that the torch is always going to be good for. But the, the laser has definitely come a long ways since the 90s and is a major tool that you will see in most jewelry stores today. I hope this helps. If you like the video, click the subscribe button uh, so that way you see further videos in the future. I appreciate it. If you have any questions or any comments, please leave them in the comments below.